When we talk about performance in Rust, one powerful tool is concurrency. And in this video, we'll focus on one of the most common ways to achieve it using threads. Thanks to its ownership and type system, Rust makes working with threads safer than in other programming languages. You get low-level control without risking data races, as long as the compiler is happy, your code is safe. We'll also clarify an important distinction between concurrency and parallelism. Let's start by exploring how to create and manage threads in Rust. Today we'll start introducing a new topic, which is concurrency and parallelism. Since this is a Rust series, we'll focus on how to solve concurrency and parallelism in Rust, so we'll focus on the syntax. Before we start making some examples, we'll start seeing threads, how to create them, how to handle different threads. Quick definition, concurrency is when there are different parts of a program that execute independently, and parallelism is when there are different parts parts of a program that execute simultaneously. So it's not exactly the same concept, but in these um, lessons we will focus more on uh, how to create uh, threads, how to send messages between threads. So when I will say concurrency, you should replace that with concurrency and parallelism. I'm lazy, so I'll just say concurrency. So I'm here in a new Rust project, imported this uh, thread from the standard library, and I also want to import uh, time duration because I want to make an example with a main thread and then a spawned thread. Here we can have this example, thread, spawn, and then we have a for cycle, this is the spawned thread, and then below this we can have a main thread. This will execute in the main function for i15, and just check here. We are waiting one millisecond, and here we are counting up to 10, 9 to be precise, because it's 10 excluded. And in the main one, in the main thread, we will count from 1 to for you see and here i may have a print statement for the main one and a print statement for the spawn one and you're waiting one millisecond each time now let's try to execute this uh, code and let's see what happens so cargo run so the execution here is not always the the same but let's see what happened here we have one from main thread one and two from thread uh, from the spawned thread then two and three from main and then three four but here we see something interesting when the main thread reaches four we can have a couple more uh, um, prints from the thread but uh, this thread doesn't make it <laughs> because uh, once this um, main thread finishes the program just exits and maybe this is not the wanted behavior. Let's say that we want, for example, the main thread to wait for the spawn thread to count until 10 before ending. It's a similar concept to lifetimes. It's not the same topic, but it's a similar concept. So how can we handle this? How can we solve this problem with a spawn thread that just dies when the main thread finishes? We can do something like this. We can do handle.join unwrap for now and then this uh, spawned thread we can put this inside a variable like this let's see what's the difference if we write this line check line 26 let's try again and let's the difference there is a difference here because now we have main thread thread the one two three but but when the main thread reaches four it waits until the spawned thread counts up until 9 and then it exits. This is the first example with threads to have the spawn thread to keep going <laughs> even when the main one has done its job. We need to add this one. What if we move this line here? So instead of putting the handle after the main thread, we put this here. Is there a difference? Let's try it out. Cargo run. Indeed, there is a difference. Now, we, the program will execute 
the for loop for the spawned thread first up until nine and then the main thread. So it depends on what we want to do. So if we want to have the spawn thread to execute in a for cycle or whatever code will be here before the main thread, we should do this handle join before this for loop. I want to make another example here. I will still want to use threads. And now I want to show a very common use case. Let's say that we have a vector. Okay, let v equal back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we can spawn a thread like before, and then we can do and dot join a wrap. Okay. If we try to execute this code, we have an error. We say it says may outlive borrowed value. So here um, we we have an error. We can't do this in this way. So if we want to pass the context of something inside a thread, we should use the move keyword. We already make a less, made a lesson about this, but this is relevant to threads. So if we add the move keyword here to pass the context to the thread, if we do like that, cargo run, and now it executes maybe how we intended. So this thread should have the context of the vector. In the next lesson, we will see message passing between threads and it will be interesting because uh, we, can, we will see how different threads can communicate each other. This was just an introduction to concurrency and parallelism in Rust. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm a big fan of concurrency and parallelism. If you have any question just uh, drop a comment below. See you in the next video. Bye bye.